Okay, so in today's video, we're going to introduce the first diagram in IB economics, which is the production possibilities curve, the PPC. So rule of thumb in IB economics diagrams, we should always write out the title of the diagram, in this case, just PPC, and then we will almost always need axes. And then we should always try to label our axes correctly. In a PPC, we will have one axis as a quantity of one good and the other axis as a quantity of another good. Here, I just put goods A and B for simplicity. And basically, what the PPC tries to illustrate is how much of either good we can produce right now with our current resources. And I am going to elaborate on this. But to start, I wanted to note the assumptions of this model. The first is that we assume there are only two goods being produced in this economy. So here we're only making good A and good B. The second is that we're saying this is a specific point in time. So it's like a snapshot where we represent a particular moment in this economy. And at this specific time, we assume that both the amount of resources, factors of production that we covered in the last video, and our level of technology are all constant. And the reason we assume that the time, amount of resources, and technology are fixed is because these are things that can influence how much we can produce. And since the PPC is trying to illustrate a production possibility, how much we can produce through a static diagram, we need to keep these things constant because if we don't, the diagram itself should also be changing. Anyways, this is what the PPC looks like. It's just a rounded curve. And to best introduce the model, let's bring in a more concrete example and switch out goods A and D for phones and computers. And going back to our assumptions, these are the only two goods being produced in the economy. So this economy apparently only makes phones and computers. And we're looking at a particular time in this economy and the resources such as steel, glass, semiconductors that could be used to make both phones or computers, their amounts are fixed. And we have constant technology. So our ability to make either good in this model stays constant. So with the resources we have, we need to choose how much of either good we're going to make, right? And any point on the curve, such as point A, represents a choice made. Where there is full employment of resources as well as efficiency, which means that we're using all the resources we have, full employment of resources, and that we're using them efficiently, where we're producing as much goods as we can with the resources we have. And let's say, for example, at point A, we're efficiently using all resources to make 40 phones and 20 computers. And that is just one way of distributing resources between the two goods. And any other point on the curve, such as point B over here, is just another way, another choice of distributing resources. Where, for example, at point B, we're efficiently using all resources to make 14 phones and 45 computers. So we're noting that in either case of point A or B, we're simply making a different choice in which good we will allocate more resources to. We're still using all resources efficiently in both cases. So any movement along this curve, A or B, represents a choice on what we're going to make and how much of it we're going to produce. So let's bring this example and organize the two scenarios A and B on a table showing the quantity of both phones and computers we can produce at each choice. Now, movement along the PPC curve illustrates the choice being made in the economy. And the changes in quantity between the different points on the curve actually illustrate opportunity cost, which we covered before, and it's the cost of making a choice. Now, let's say that we start at option A, producing 40 phones and 20 computers. Now, as we switch over to option B, we can now produce 25 more computers. However, as we allocate more resources to produce 25 additional computers, 
were simultaneously allocating resources away from producing phones. And we end up with the opportunity cost of having to forego the number of phones we can make. And now we have 26 less phones we can produce at this choice. So the opportunity cost of going from option A to B is that for every computer we gained, and we gained 25 computers, we gave up 26 phones. So we have given up 1.04 phones for every computer we gained. And this is how the PPC illustrates opportunity cost. As we move along different points on the curve, each new choice to produce at a particular point means that more resources are being allocated to one good, and those resources have been allocated away from another good. So we're illustrating both choice and opportunity cost of that choice on the PPC.